Hi, welcome to my 144th video on financial math for actuarial exam 2. We're going to do problem 6.3.4 from Broverman in this video. We'll be finding one and two year forward effective annual rates of interest, emphasis on the word forward, when we are given the term structure on zero coupon bonds. The idea of a forward rate of interest is something new. I've not talked about that to this point. It is kind of the starting point for thinking about fancier, more exotic kinds of investment schemes. So it's a good thing to start talking about if we're going to talk about advanced finance. Um, in a nutshell, you can think of forward interest rates as being what we would expect to be in effect in the future. The word forward is kind of referring to the future. So here's the problem statement. We've got a current term structure of interest rates for zero coupon bonds, a current term structure of interest rates that are effective annual interest rates for one, two, and three year maturity, zero coupon bonds. For one year bond, um, zero coupon bonds, it's 8%. For two years, zero coupon bonds, it's 10%. And for three years, zero coupon bonds, it's 11%. The goal is to find the one year forward, emphasis on the word forward is something new, effective annual rate of interest, and find the two year forward, again, emphasis on the word forward, effective annual rate of interest. And again, in a brief nutshell, what they represent are uh, interest rates that we expect to be in effect in the future based on this term structure. However, and this is a point made in Broverman's book, we can also guarantee these rates in the future by fan a fancy kind of investment scheme that I'll describe right now. So well, let's focus first on the one-year forward effective annual interest rate, rate of interest. Um, so let's imagine that this stick figure right here is you. That's you. And you've got a bank, say, that you are going to borrow money from, from, and you're going to immediately take that borrowed money and reinvest it, say, in zero coupon bonds, or it could be something else, but we're going to be thinking about these particular interest rates. And to keep things simple, we're going to also assume that the, uh, the interest rates on the money that we borrow also follow this term structure, okay? That'll keep things simpler. It may not be true in practice, but just to keep things simple, when we first start talking about forward rates of interest, we will make that assumption. So let's say you borrow uh, one at time zero. So one is the amount of money borrowed at time zero. And you're going to take that money and invest it. So your net outlay at time zero is actually going to be zero. But you are going to have to repay the money back, let's say in one year based on this 8% interest rate. So we're doing that at R1 equals 0 0.08. And we will have to pay that back in one year. But again, we're immediately going to take that money and invest it. I'll say investment here. Although, based on the description in this problem, I guess that would, investment would have to be a zero coupon bond. But we can think more generally as well. That one at time zero. And uh, But let's make that for two years instead of one year. Instead of one year. So we're going to use the two-year forward rate, or excuse me, the two-year spot rate R2 equals 0 0.10. Okay, so again, the net outlay at time zero is zero. Let's draw a timeline over here as well. So you, um, first of the money from the bank comes to you, so we could call that a plus one, but then that money immediately goes out to the investment, minus one, your net outlay at time zero is zero. However, I said that with the money you borrowed, you'd have to pay back in one year. So in one year, you're going to have to pay back 1.08. 1.08 at t equals 1. So that is going to be a net outlay. So minus 1.08 at time 1. And then this investment was a two-year investment. And you're earning an effective annual interest rate of 10%. So what's going to come back to you at time 2 is going to be 1.1 squared, which is 1.21, at t equals 2. Coming back to the timeline, that means you get back 1.1 squared, uh, 1.21. Okay? What the one-year forward uh, effective annual rate of interest represents is the growth on effectively this investment of 1.08 at time 1 until time 2. That's what it represents. Let's denote that by the letter F here. F is going to be the 
one year forward. The one year corresponds to the fact that the investment is going to be made effectively at time one. It's, it's like we are investing 1.08 at time one, even though that's paying it back to the bank instead of the investment itself. Effectively, from our perspective, that's like our investment. One year forward effective annual rate of interest. And what would it represent? It would represent, again, the interest rate on this investment of 1.08 at time one. So 1.08 times 1 plus f would equal what that grows to in that one year, 1.21. And so that would be, we can solve this for f. f would be 1.21, which I'll write as 1.1 squared, just to emphasize where it came from. Divide by 1.08 minus 1. Let's go ahead and calculate that. Again, just to confirm, 1.1 squared is 1.21. Divide by 1.08, subtract 1. This forward one-year rate of interest is about 0 0.1204, 12.04%. So what this means is based on this ter current term structure for zero coupon bonds, we can arrange, guarantee based on the loan we make and the investment we make, to get a rate of return of 12%, a little bit more than 12%, for the time period from time one to time two, okay? Based on this ter current term structure, which 12% is bigger than any of these amounts here, bigger than 8%, 10%, or 11%. So that should so seem good. Um, and it, I guess you could say it is, although you do have to wait one year to make the investment. Um, but it's, it's definitely something that can be arranged if you want, okay? And it's again, it's sort of also an expectation about what a what the interest rate would be over the one year period from time one to time two based on this term structure is another way to view it, though again, circumstances could change in real life. Uh, in Broverman's book, starting with the seventh edition, they use an alternative notation for this. They would label this F sub the interval from one to two to emphasize that the interest rate is effective over the interval from time one to time two. Okay? That would be the notation used. And there's the answer. All right, well, that's half the problem. What about the two-year forward effective annual rate of interest? Now we're going to use the 11% uh, zero coupon return that is effective for a three-year zero coupon bond. Um, we are still going to borrow one at time zero uh, from the bank. So I'll write that down in the second situation. However, we're going to pay it back in two years instead of one year. That's where this two years is going to come into play. So we're going to pay back, based on the 10%, we're going to pay back 1.1 squared, 1.21, at t equals 2. And this was at r2 equals 0 0.10. OK? Thinking again about a timeline in this situation. We're going to borrow the money. We're going to invest it right away at time zero, so the net outlay at time zero is going to be zero. But then we're going to pay that bank back, the loan we took out back, at time two this time. Negative 1.1 squared, which will be negative 1.21. And we are investing in a three-year zero coupon bond at time zero. So this is one at t equals zero at r3 equals 0.11. And then we'll get them back at time three, 1.11 quantity cubed. That's going to go back to us. 1.11 quantity cubed at t equals three. That's what comes back to us. All right. So now if f represents the two-year forward effective annual rate of interest, It's the rate of return on an investment. We, we can arrange for this to happen. It's also what we would expect based on the ter current term structure. This investment of 1.1 squared at time two and how much it grows to by time three during that one year period. Okay, these are one year periods of time. The one and two year uh, things that are in front of the word forward refer to how long effectively we make to we wait to make the investment. 
So here we would have 1.1 squared times 1 plus f equals 1.11 cubed. f is 1.11 cubed divided by 1.1 squared minus 1. Uh, 1.1 squared again is 1.21. Just remind myself of that. 1.11 cubed is that. Divide by 1.21 and subtract 1. The two-year forward annual effective rate of interest is about 0 0.1303, 13.03%, and that is correct as well. That is the two-year forward effective annual rate of interest. Notationally, in the seventh edition of Broberman, again, actually in the sixth edition and before, they didn't quite use this exact same notation, but they're trying to stay consistent with something that the Society of Actuaries, SRA, does. They denote this, Broberman denotes this by F sub, the interval from 2 to 3, to emphasize that it's an interest rate that's in effect as a forward rate based on this term structure up there <clears throat> from the time period, uh, from time 2 to time 3. Okay, so that's your introduction to the idea of a forward rate of interest.